Welcome to the vidcast of the OWL at Purdue, where we deepen our knowledge of rhetoric, logic, invention, and communication. Whether you want to know more about the ancient history of rhetoric, or just get some advice on how to choose the best medium for your message, the OWL vidcasts are here to guide you. For centuries, logic has played an important role in supporting, explaining, refuting, and justifying written arguments. In this vidcast, we answer the questions, what is logos? Why is logical reasoning important to our writing? And how is Logos persuasive? As you listen, consider how the arrangement of arguments or the connections between concepts in a text increases its believability. An understanding of logic helps writers validate their arguments. Enjoy the vidcast. Finally, I got a response back to those application materials that I sent in. I wonder what they had to say. Mr. Smith. Thank you for your application packet. However, we will not be giving you a job at this time. Indeed, your packet is the worst our company has ever received. In response to our request for more information about your college education, you told us a garbled story about your childhood pet, Misty Pookums. You drew a picture in the section referring to your office management style, though the water cooler on fire with a Godzilla in a tie was somewhat effective. Even your name, on the bottom right-hand corner of the page, was difficult to find. We will not be offering you a position in this company, ever. Sometimes, being persuasive is as simple as carefully selecting and organizing your information. It certainly never hurts. Selection and organization are a part of Logos. In rhetoric, Logos is a method of persuasion that relies on the selection and organization of ideas, facts, and logic. I always define logos as the logical quality of a speech or a text that makes it persuasive. If something makes logical sense, people tend to believe it. I think that's a good start, but I understand logos to have a much bigger scope. It isn't just whether someone is saying logical stuff, it's also about the evidence the speaker uses, how many facts are in the speech and where they come from, the weight and substance of evidence. For example, if I were to hear a speaker who had research from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal backing her up, I tend to listen to her. Why? Because the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times are considered by most people to be credible sources. Hmm. Well, um, that makes it sound a lot like ethos. Logos and ethos aren't the same, are they? That's a great question. While they are similar in certain respects, Logos focuses more on arrangement, organization, and clarity. In other words, Logos focuses on the manner in which a speech or argument is written. What do you mean by that? A speech that goes from point A to point B is easy to understand and believe in. It's clear, and that's part of Logos. Speeches and writing have to proceed logically for them to be persuasive. So what you're saying is that Logos, in a way, precedes ethos. In order for your argument to be credible, first it has to be arranged and structured in a logical, clear manner. That makes sense. But then how exactly is Logos persuasive? Well, there are a number of ways. For example, imagine a situation where you have two pieces of evidence with which you could begin your argument. One of the pieces of evidence is emotional, where the other is just dry statistical evidence. If you believe the emotional example would be more persuasive, you would use it first, and then use the statistical evidence in a latter section of the argument. In this example, your arrangement was purposeful and used in a way to persuade your audience. That is a part of Logos. Okay, I think I understand what you're getting at. Are there any other examples that are really good? Sure, let's think about how images and text work together. It's clear that images speak and can stand alone or help supplement written text. If you decide to use an image to strengthen your argument, where would you place it on a page? alone, near the text it supports, on the next page, at the end, ultimately you would place or arrange the image where it would make the most amount of sense. That placement is part of Logos.